The author claims that a Christian group called the Parabolani were responsible for the murder of the Arian Bishop of Alexandria, George the Cappadocian. No references give any indication to this claim. It is historically known that the emergence of the Parabolani was toward the beginning of the 5th century, when they established a strong foundation and not before. As a result of comprehensive research on the work of early historians contemporary to these events, and according to internationally recognized manuscripts to find the truth, the following was discovered. The Arian, George the Cappadocian, was imposed Bishop of Alexandria, rather than the legitimate Bishop St. Athanasius the Apostolic, in early AD 357 by Emperor Constantius the Arian. Immediately after becoming Bishop of Alexandria, George began a series of violent terrorist acts against both pagans and also the followers of St. Athanasius of the Orthodox faith. Therefore, they all revolted against him in late AD 358 and forced him to leave Alexandria. But he managed to return again in November of AD 361, just four days after the death of Emperor Constantius his protector and the ascent of Emperor Julian the Apostate. Socrates mentions that the pagans hated George the Cappadocian, not tolerating his insults against them. There was a place in that city which had long been abandoned to neglect and filth, wherein the pagans had formerly celebrated their mysteries and sacrificed human beings to Mithra, Persian theology. This being empty and otherwise useless, Constantius had granted it to the Church of the Alexandrians, and George, wishing to erect a church on the site of it, gave directions that the place should be cleansed. In the process of clearing it, an aditum, secret sanctuary of vast depth, was discovered, which unveiled the nature of their heathenish rites. For there were found there the skulls of many persons of all ages, who were said to have been immolated for the purpose of divination by the inspection of entrails, when the pagans performed these and such like magic arts, whereby they enchanted the souls of men. When the pagans of Alexandria beheld this, unable to bear the insulting character of the act, they became so exasperated that they assailed the Christians with whatever weapon chanced to come to hand. In their fury, destroying numbers of them in a variety of ways, some they killed with a sword, others with clubs and stones, some they strangled with ropes, others they crucified, purposely inflicting this last kind of death in contempt of the cross of Christ. Most of them they wounded, and as it generally happens in such a case, neither friends, brothers, parents and children imbrued their hands in each other's blood. Wherefore the Christians cease from cleansing the Mithraeum. The pagans, meanwhile, having dragged George out of the church, fastened him to a camel, and when they had torn him to pieces, they burnt him together with the camel. A report was circulated that those who detested him because of Athanasius perpetrated this outrage upon George. But as for me, I think it is undoubtedly true that such as cherish hostile feelings against particular individuals are often found identified with popular commotions. Yet the Emperor's letter evidently attaches the blame to the populace rather than to any among the Christians. Excerpts from a letter by the Emperor Being on all these accounts enraged against George as the adversary of the gods, you have again polluted your sacred city, whereas you ought to have impeached him before the judges. For had you thus acted, neither murder nor any other unlawful deed would have been committed, but justice, being equitably dispensed, would have preserved you innocent of these disgraceful excesses, while it brought on him the punishment due to his impious crimes. Sosamon also states, When the magistrates had announced to the public the decease of Constantius and that Julian was sole ruler, the pagans of Alexandria rose up in sedition. They attacked George with shouts and reproaches as if they would kill him at once. The repellents of this precipitate attack then put him in a prison. A little while after, they rushed early in the morning to the prison, killed him, flung the corpse upon a camel, and after exposing it to every insult during the day, burnt it at nightfall. I am not ignorant that the Arian heretics assert that George received this cruel treatment from the followers of Athanasius, 
But it seems to me more probable that the perpetrators of these deeds were the pagans, for they had more cause than any other body of men to hate him. Sozomen mentions as Socrates regarding Mithra and the killing of the Christians by the pagans. The pagans murdered George as soon as they had heard of the accession of Julian to the empire. This fact is admitted by the emperor himself, which he would not have confessed unless he had been forced by the truth, for he would rather, I think, have had the Christians, whoever they were, than the pagans to be the murderers of George, but it could not be concealed.